Seven years ago, I was reading a book about investments and I came across this quote by Warren Buffett. The best investment you can make is in yourself. It was one of those watershed moments that completely transformed the way I lived my life. I stopped holding myself back and I started seriously spending on myself. $290 for a gym membership, $5,800 for a coaching program. These numbers began to look like tiny blips on the timeline of my ultimate success. I compared my life to the S&P 500 index fund. If you keep investing in yourself and you give it enough time, your self-worth is guaranteed to go up and to the right. Of course, as empowering as this narrative sounds, we also have to face the harsh reality that not all investments are good investments and good investments can become bad investments. When something you're spending money on is no longer serving you, cutting it out of your life doesn't mean you've given up on investing in yourself. You can reframe this as decluttering your life to make room for new ways to grow. And you also save a lot of money along the way. So in this video, I wanna share with you seven things I stopped wasting money on. First up, we have subscriptions. For some reason, you can't just buy one thing anymore. You always have to buy an entire month's or an entire year's supply of it. Some of these subscription services are deeply enriching to our lives. For example, Audible for knowledge acquisition, Netflix for entertainment. But I rarely use these services at a constant rate every month. Sometimes there's this one Netflix series I would binge in a week. And then for the next six months, I don't watch anything at all. During this time, my subscription is just silently siphoning money away from me. With Netflix at $15 a month, that's like paying $90 to watch a TV show. If you compound the situation with the rest of the subscriptions you're paying for, then you're just overpaying for everything in your life. Whenever possible, I try to avoid subscription services. I run my life off of this to-do list app right here called Things3. It's a great app, five stars on the app store. I use it every day. I paid a one-time price of $9.99 and never had it bother me again. When it's not possible to avoid a subscription like with Netflix, I always opt for the monthly subscription so I can cancel it after I finish watching a show. If there's another show I want to watch, I can always resubscribe at a later time. I do the same thing with Amazon Prime, Audible, you name it. The only exception is my gym membership because I actually do go to the gym at least three times a week. No money wasted there. Whether we like it or not, people's impressions of us do matter. And a lot of it comes down to the way that we dress. So if you've never invested in fashion before, I would highly recommend looking into building a capsule wardrobe. It's like a small collection of timeless pieces that you can combine in hundreds of ways so that you can look well put together in any situation. But if you already have something like that, buying new clothing at this point can be somewhat of a vanity splurge. <laughs> I'm not judging, I do it myself. Sometimes I would be scrolling through Instagram and I see this ad. Before I know it, I end up buying something that gives me a huge dopamine rush the first time I wear it, and then it just ends up hiding in my closet for the rest of the year. I know this might be tough for those of you who truly enjoy trying on new outfits, but at least for me, I've gotten to the point where I'm content with recycling the outfits that I already own, and I'm happy with the way I look. So I set a rule for myself where I would only refresh my wardrobe for rare special occasions, like a wedding or a festival, and I went from spending over $3,000 a year on clothing to less than $300 this year. I feel about technology the same way I feel about clothing. A lot of the things I splurged on earlier on, like this first generation AirPods or this Apple Watch, the battery life has seriously deteriorated on these things. My AirPods last for exactly 50 minutes, which is the average duration of my workout sessions. And since that's the only thing I use it for, I have no motivation to get new ones. And that's great because these things can add up to become pretty costly. And we're just talking about some of the smaller things, bigger things like a skateboard, a drone, or a Peloton can easily eat up an entire month's worth of rent. If you were truly flush with disposable cash, there's nothing wrong with dropping a couple grands on a few toys to play with. But during tighter economic times, technology should be one of the first things to cut back on. A car is probably the single biggest piece of technology the average person will own in their lifetime. 
It is both a status symbol and a super useful tool. Because of these two properties, it's really easy to justify or at least turn a blind eye to how ridiculously expensive cars can be. So I have a car already. It's a secondhand 2015 Mercedes-Benz sedan, but I also have a pre-order reservation on the Tesla Cybertruck. I wanted to be one of the first people on the street with a full self-driving vehicle that's also big enough to go camping with. This reservation is from two years ago, and lo and behold, Cybertruck production still hasn't begun. So lucky for me, I get to back out of this purchase before I get buyer's remorse. The whole electric charging network is probably not as mature as advertised, and there's a whole lot of maintenance unknowns, like what happens to the value of the car when the battery deteriorates. And let's not forget, a Cybertruck with full self-driving is probably going to cost at least $100,000. It's just much more sensible for me to keep driving my current car, even if I have to pay for gas for the next 15 years, it is still cheaper than buying a Cybertruck. Aside from these big ticket items that I might consider vanity splurges, my propensity for fancy things also bleeds into my everyday essentials. The best example is my hand soap. This bottle of hand wash costs $50. You can have 10 bottles of regular hand wash for the price of one. And this electric toothbrush, $300. It's nice to treat yourself once in a blue moon, but it's also healthy to adopt this voice in your head to remind you of tiny ways you can be more frugal. Next up, we have travel. Travel is really important to me. It makes me more cultured, empathetic, and all around smarter. But with inflation and everything else going on in the world, travel is a lot less affordable than it was back in 2019. To help me cut back on travel, I started cultivating weekend routines that keep me local. For example, rock climbing on Saturdays, playing volleyball on Sundays. Having things to do also helped me cope with the feeling of missing out when my friends go on a trip without me. I'm not cutting travel out of my life altogether. I'm reducing the frequency of it to a few times a year instead of every other weekend. I also have travel reward credit cards to help me cut down the costs even further. Every year I accumulate travel reward points that can be used to redeem for flights and hotels. I usually have enough to fully cover two to three trips. When I notice myself running low on these reward points, it acts as a natural alert for me to start spacing out my trips so that I'm not overspending on travel. If you don't have the habit or ability of fully paying off your credit cards each month, then don't get credit cards. You risk ending up in a bad debt cycle with no easy way out. But if you are able to pay off your credit cards in full each month, then I would recommend looking into some of these travel credit reward cards I talked about earlier. One thing to keep in mind though, is that credit card companies make money with every transaction you make. So their entire game is to keep you spending. Spend $4,000 in the first three months to get $800 back. Get $10 back for every $100 you spend on travel. This is great for you if you already plan on spending that amount of money anyways. But if you were just going about your day and you saw this promotion and suddenly you're like, oh wow, I've got to book a flight to Europe right now. Well, <laughs> that's how they get you. I hold on to the Chase Sapphire Preserve and the American Express Platinum card simply because I've had them for so long already. But I strictly use these for everyday purchases and my planned vacations. I'm not putting any extra effort into spending more money so I can get more reward points, and I'm definitely not looking for new credit cards at this point. I want to end with another one of my favorite quotes by Benjamin Franklin. Change is the only constant in life. One's ability to adapt to those changes will determine your success in life. The way I see it, how we live our lives are delicately tied to the way we spend our money. When we elect to make changes to our spending habits, even if we end up not liking those changes or reverting back to our old habits, we will still have exercised our adaptation skills, and that makes us stronger. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. My name is Alan, and here are some of my other videos you might want to check out.